In lesson 5.1, you will use properties of exponents. And here's three of those properties. In our first example, we're multiplying like bases. When we multiply like bases, all we have to do is add those exponents. So it's 2 to the 2 plus 3 power, which is 2 to the 5th power. 5 factors of 2 in this product. We can show that by expanding because we have 2 factors of 2 first and then 3 factors of 2 in this product. So altogether we have 5 factors of 2 or 2 to the 5th power. Okay. In the second example we're multiplying like bases. So we can use our product of powers property again and add those exponents. Negative 3 plus 9. So we end up with negative 2 raised to the sixth power. But an even number of negative factors is just going to be a positive product. So I can write this as 2 to the sixth power and simplify by getting rid of that negative sign. In our third example, we have a power raised to a power. When, we're, when we have double powers, all we have to do to simplify or get rid of parentheses is multiply those double powers. So in this product, we have 3 to the 8th power, or 8 factors of 3. I can show this again by expanding because I have 2 factors of 3 to the 4th power. And my product of powers property says if I'm multiplying like bases, I can add exponents. So again, we end up with 3 to the 8th power. Okay, in our fourth uh, example, we have a, a product raised to a power. When we have a product raised to a power, we want to use a power of a product property and raise every factor inside parentheses to that power outside. We can show it again by expanding because we have three factors of 3x in this product. But that's just three factors of 3 in this product and three factors of x. So we get our 3 cubed times x cubed. Here in example 5 we have a product raised to a power. So we'd want to raise every factor inside parentheses to that power outside again. But we have an even number of negative factors which is going to be a positive product. So I'll get rid of that negative sign and write this as 2 to the 4th power times y to the 4th power. In 6, we have a product raised to a, a power, but we have this negative 1 multiplied to that product, and that negative 1 is not going to go away. We have, getting rid of parentheses, we have 2 to the 4th power and y to the 4th power. And negative 1 times that product is just going to be a negative 2 to the 4th power, y to the 4th power. So notice that if our negative sign is inside parentheses, we could end up with a positive product. But if our negative sign is outside parentheses, we'll end up with a negative product. So be careful with your parentheses and your negative signs. Here's four more properties of exponents. In the first example, we want to get rid of that negative exponent. We have a negative exponent property that tells us we can move that base to the denominator of a fraction and make that exponent positive. So we end up with 1 over 2 cubed as a result. In example 2, we have 5 raised to the 0 power. We'll use our 0 exponent property here because anything raised to the 0 power has a value of 1. No matter how complicated, if it's raised to the 0 power, it has a value of 1. In example 3, we're dividing like bases. When we divide like bases, we subtract exponents. So we have 6 to the 2 minus 4 power or 6 to the negative 2 power. But we don't leave negative exponents in our answer, so we have to use our negative exponent property and move that base to the denominator of the fraction and make the exponent positive. So we end up with 1 over 6 squared. We can show that uh, by expanding. We have 2 factors of 6 in the top and 4 factors of 6 in the denominator of this fraction. We know that we can cancel like factors top and bottom. So we're going to end up with 1 
in the numerator and two factors of six in the denominator. In example four, we have a quotient raised to a power. Our quotient of powers property, uh, or our power of a quotient property, tells us that we can raise the numerator to that power outside and the denominator to that power outside and get rid of parentheses. So we end up with five cubed over eight cubed. If I show that by expanding, I have three factors of five a's in this product. And when we multiply fractions, we multiply tops and multiply bottoms. So multiplying the numerators, I see I have three factors of five in the top. And multiplying the denominators, I have three factors of eight in the bottom. So again, I end up with five cubed over eight cubed. In example five, we're going to show that in example one, when we change two to the negative third power, we got one over two to the third power. So we're going to start with one over two to the third power. I'm going to change that one to two to the zero power because anything to the zero power has a value of one. Then in this quotient, I'm dividing like bases. So I want to subtract those exponents using our quotient of powers property. So I have two to the zero minus three power, which simplifies to two to the negative third power. So two to the negative third power does equal one over two to the positive third power. It works both ways. If I have seven to the negative two power in the denominator, I can move it to the numerator and make that exponent positive. So I end up with seven squared as a result. Here we have three problems to simplify. In the first one, we have a quotient raised to a power. So I'd start by getting rid of parentheses by raising every factor in this quotient, top and bottom, to that power outside. So I have a squared raised to the third power in the top and b to the negative third power raised to the third power in the bottom. Now double powers I multiply. So I have a to the two times three power in the top or a to the sixth power and b to the negative three times three power in the bottom. That's b to the negative ninth power. And again, I don't leave a negative exponent in my answer. So I'm going to raise that b to the numerator of this fraction and make the exponent positive. So I end up with a to the sixth times b to the ninth. In the second example, inside parentheses, I actually have negative one times y squared. It's just the y that's squared, not the negative one. And they're both raised to the fifth power. So getting rid of parentheses, I want to raise both factors inside parentheses to that power outside. So I'd raise negative one to the fifth power and I'd raise y squared to the fifth power. So negative one to the fifth power, that's five factors of negative one multiplied together. That's going to be negative one. And double powers I multiply, so I get y to the two times five or tenth power times y squared times y to the negative twelve. Now I'm multiplying like bases. So I'll use the property that when we're multiplying like bases, we add exponents. So I have ten plus two minus twelve, or that's y to the zero power. And anything to the zero power we know is one. So I end up with negative one times one, which is negative one. This whole product simplifies to negative one. Okay, in the third example in the denominator, I have parentheses. So I'm going to remove those parentheses by raising r to the third power and s to the negative one power to the third power. Now in the denominator, I have double powers that I'll multiply. Negative one times three is negative three. Okay, and now I'm dividing like bases, so I want to subtract exponents. This r in the numerator has an exponent of one, 
when we don't show an exponent, we know that it's 1 because we can see we have 1 factor of r. We don't always show it. So now subtracting exponents, I have r to the 1 minus 3 power times s to the 2 minus a negative 3 power. So that's r to the negative 2 power times s to the double negatives it's uh, adding, so 2 plus 3 or 5th power. Now I have to get rid of my negative exponent, so I'll leave s to the 5th power in the top, and I'll move that r to the denominator and make the exponent positive. So my end result is s to the 5th power over r squared. Here we're using scientific notation, and scientific notation is a way of expressing very large or small numbers in shortcut form. In this first example, we want to multiply these scientific uh, notation, and when we multiply, we want to multiply like factors together in this product. So I would start by multiplying 1.2 times 6.7 and get 8.04 as a result, times 10 to what power? Here we're multiplying like bases again, so we want to add exponents. Negative 3 plus negative 7 is a total of negative 10. Now this result is in scientific notation because I have a number between 1 and 10 times a power of 10. So we're done. Okay, in the second example, we're dividing scientific notation. So again, we can divide like like numbers, like factors. When I divide 1.5 by 5.5, I get 0.2. And then when I divide like bases, remember we're subtracting exponents, so it's negative 3 take away a negative 8. That's negative 3 plus 8, so I get 0.2 times 10 to the fifth power. But this number is not in scientific notation because 0.2 is not a number between 1 and 10. So I have to move that decimal point one place to the right, writing that first factor is 2 times 10 to the negative 1 power, because I want a small number back, times 10 to the fifth power. And now simplifying, I've got 2 times 10 to the negative 1 plus 5 power, or fourth power. So my result now is in scientific notation because I have a number between 1 and 10 times a power of 10. Include with your notes of this video guided practice problems 1 through 8 on pages 331 and 333 of your textbook.